This is Duke University. Hello, my name is Christine Mormon, and I'm a member of the marketing faculty here at the Fuqua School of Business. And today I'm going to be talking to you about the management of social media and marketing analytics. And this presentation is going to be slightly different than some of the other research projects that you've heard over the last few years. What I'd like to do is share with you some of the data and results and insights that I've gained from running the CMO survey. Now the CMO survey, we run it twice a year, and the goal of the survey is to predict the future of markets, track marketing excellence, and improve the value of marketing both in firms and society. The question I thought I would lead with that I thought would be interesting is uh, the answer to the question, how would you rate your company's marketing excellence? And we ask marketing leaders this question, and we've been asking it now for several years. One of the observations that you can clearly take away from this slide is that things aren't really changing. That on a scale from one to seven, where one is very weak and seven is a leader, marketers tend not to report that their companies are strongly leaders. Obviously, this is a good result, but one of the goals of the CMO survey is to try to improve results like this over time. So, let me start with some of the other results. I thought an interesting question that we might uh, look at first is how marketing spending is changing overall, because this sets the context for understanding how social media and marketing analytics spending are changing. So when we asked uh, top marketers to report what percent change do they expect their marketing budgets to make in the next 12 months. This, this is a forward-looking measure, so we're asking them what they expect to happen in the future. What you can see is that they, uh, they report an 8.7% increase over the next year. Um, and this is, uh, as you can see from this data, this is the highest point that we've seen in the last three years. And if you look at other uh, indicators in the data. Part of the reason for this is that marketers are very confident or increasingly confident about a variety of, of important consumer outcomes associated with acquiring those consumers, retaining them, growing those consumers over time. So with this as kind of the backdrop, let's look at uh, social media and marketing analytics in particular. In terms of managing social media, I think one of the most impressive results that we've uh, charted over the, the course of, of, of performing the CMO survey is how social media spending is changing. These numbers which show the, the social media spending as a percent of marketing budget show that currently it's about 9.9 percent and this is expected to grow up to 22.4 percent in the next five years. So this is a very large increase expected uh, in social media spending over the next few years. Well, this is, uh, I think, interesting and important to, to notice, but let's look at some of the other challenges that are associated with social media. One of the challenges that uh, I'll document here for you, maybe we can get into a deeper conversation uh, when we meet online um, next week, is this issue of how well social media is integrated with the rest of the firm's marketing strategy. If you think about it, social media is just one aspect of the firm's overall interactions with its customers. Uh, and so I think it's surprising, and others have found it surprising as well, that we see that although companies are spending an enormous amount on social media these days, that in fact they have achieved very little by way of integration. So on this seven point scale where seven is very integrated and one is not at all integrated, we see that essentially the number has not changed over the course of these last four years. So there's a missed opportunity here because if you think about it when the firm goes to market in reaching its customers it would like to go to market, it's, bring its strategy as a whole to market and bring everything that the company is doing in its interaction with customers in a, in a very integrated way. So there's an opportunity I, he I think here for companies to improve. What are some of the reasons why this integration problem uh, continues to plague companies? One that I'll point to uh, is the fact that companies do in fact outsource a high percentage of their social media activities. So when we asked, and this is the very first time we've asked this question, so I only have um, these two data points. We asked currently 
what percentage of your social media activities are outsourced, and then what did you do a year ago. And what you can see here is that even just over this one year period, we've seen an increase um, up to this almost 19% of the social media activities. And if over here, what we, we also chart are some of the different industries. And if you're in a particular industry and you want to see results specific to your industry, you'll be able to see those longer reports, uh, which will be available um, this week. But it's interesting here to note that B2C product companies often considered to be among the most progressive um, marketers. In fact, they outsource 36% of their social media activity, in part probably because they're doing quite a lot of it. Um, other reasons not clear. Um, but in fact, when you think about the integration of social media with the rest of the marketing strategy, if an outside agency is performing a lot of the social media activities, I think that's one of the underlying reasons that we see potentially uh, this integration problem not getting solved. Another problem is that companies are also reaching consumers uh, through a variety of different mechanisms. One, of course, is mobile. Um, and looking at both current levels, um, current percentage of marketing budgets, and then what marketers expect to spend in the next three years, we see that there's a lot of money being spent in the mobile area, which again, when you think about integrating all of the different elements that the company is using um, in its interactions with customers, I think this points to the challenge of doing that and getting that right. The, the use of mobile to reach customers and also the fact that customers are actually purchasing products uh, using their mobile devices and engaging with companies uh, on their mobile devices in so many different ways, I think bodes uh, are sort of points in the direction of this second challenge that I'd like to, 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 to show you, which is that when we ask companies how well they integrate customer information from all of the different ways, channels, if you will, purchasing channels, communication channels, social media channels, um, when we ask them how effectively they, they integrate all of that information, as you can see, uh, again, these numbers are not improving. So there's a lot of information coming into companies and there's an opportunity to really build that 360 degree view of the customer interactions with the company. But as you can see, this doesn't seem to be part of the way in which companies are solving the social media problem at this particular point. So this is another challenge. The third challenge, of course, is that uh, companies need to think about measuring social media. And what we know from other data in the survey is that I think only 13% of companies uh, are able to measure the effect of social media on their customers using various types of quantitative metrics. So then you might ask, well, what kinds of measures are they using um, in, in, in examining customer behavior online? Well, what, what I'm showing you here in this particular slide is that over the course of four years, between August of 2010 and the prior survey, which was August 2014, what you can see is a big uptick in the percentage of companies using what you might call referral and engagement metrics. These are things like number of followers and friends, uh, buzz indicators, net promoter score, um, these kinds of things. And all of these are in the green, um, highlighted in green here. On the other hand, um, various kinds of financial metrics, sales levels, profits, uh, customer retention costs, uh, even revenues. These are things that companies are not using to, uh, they're using to a lower degree when examining uh, their customer behaviors online. Now, part of the challenge is that, um, although I would agree that it's important for companies to use these various kinds of referral and engagement metrics. And it's logical because these are the first types of activities that companies often see when they use social media. For example, friends and followers or buzz indicators. In the end, however, companies will have to work to solve various kinds of um, attribution problems, uh, various kinds of modeling challenges to be able to connect even those important buzz indicators to various kinds of financial outcomes. So we're going to move in that direction ultimately.
But I think it's important to note that this is where companies are at this particular point in time. They're focusing on those kind of first line of customer behaviors that they can observe in response to various kinds of social media activities. And in fact, this is the, the pie that I was referring to earlier that companies are, most companies find it very difficult to um, evaluate the impact of social media. So as you can see here, only 13% report a quantitative ability to do so. 45%, um, I think that's the striking number here in the blue part of this pie, haven't been able to show the impact of, of social media on their business. So this is a really important challenge and this discussion that we had about metrics I think is, a, is, a, is an important indicator of the direction that companies are going and I think also points to some of the additional challenges that they'll face um, going forward in that area. Now one of the reasons that I would encourage companies to and marketing leaders to try to solve this problem of getting good metrics, figuring out how to sell their products online in particular, is, is showed in this particular graph, which is the marketing spend um, as a percent of firm revenue by various levels of company internet sales. So as you can see, that companies with 0% of sales through the internet, their marketing budgets as a percent of firm revenues are only 6.1%. That more than doubles when we go to companies that have 10% or more of sales through the internet. So there seems to be a correspondence in the size of marketing budgets depending on how well companies uh, sell their products and services through the internet. So figuring out this whole social media piece to be able to increase the likelihood that customers will purchase products online appears to be both good for marketing within companies um, and and hopefully good for companies in general. The last challenge that I thought I would point to here is the issue uh, that corresponds, of course, with, with social media, and that is the use of online customer data. Um, when we asked marketing leaders, do their companies use customer behavior data to target customers? 42% um, said that they did. Okay. And it, more important than that number, which is a very large number, is that most companies expect that this will, only, that this will increase over time. 0% decreasing and 92.3% expect that to increase. So in fact, this is a trend that will definitely continue into the future. And corresponding with that trend, of course, are issues related to privacy. And we asked marketing leaders, how worried are you about the online use of, of customer data? Do you think it's going to raise privacy concerns? And in fact, as you can see from this um, frequency distribution, on this seven point scale where one is not at all worried and seven is very worried, there's a mean of 3.2%. So the majority of marketing leaders are not worried about issues related to privacy. And my sense after talking with people in the field is that in fact this is not because they're cavalier about these issues, but rather that they understand that, uh, that they have this relationship with their customers that in fact by asking for and using data about customers that they're able to provide those customers with better uh, value in the relationship and to serve them more effectively. So I think that that's the spirit of the use of, of online data um, and I think that's an important thing as we, as we consider the role of marketing within society it's important to consider how marketers view this customer information and to ensure that it is in fact used in this way for the betterment of the customer relationship, the betterment of the customer's life um, and not to take advantage of the customer. So the second topic that I'd like to share with you today is the management of marketing analytics, which is of course marketing's version of big data. So one of the reasons I think this issue is so important for marketing relates to this set of results. When we asked marketing leaders, do you feel pressure from your CEO or board to prove the value of marketing? As you can see, 61% answer yes in response to that question, and that in fact they um, most of them report that this level of pressure is increasing. So marketers feel a lot of pressure to prove their value, prove the value of marketing to their companies. Um, and so I think it's not surprising, therefore, given the availability of so much marketing data 
um, in the marketplace now that we see that spending on marketing analytics is also expected to increase in a big way. So we see this 83% increase over the next three years from current levels of 6.4% of marketing budgets up to 11.7%. Okay? So just like we saw with social media, there are a number of challenges associated with the management of social, uh, excuse me, the management of marketing analytics that I thought I would refer to. The first is, of course, the most fundamental, which is that, in fact, most projects fail to use marketing analytics. When we asked marketing leaders, in what percent of projects do you use both available and or requested marketing analytics? This is data that's present and can be used, in other words, or they, in fact, requested the data. What we see is that only 29% of projects use information that's available and are requested. And that, as you can see also, this number is decreasing over time. So although we see this increase in the spend of marketing analytics, we see a drop off in the percent of companies um, using marketing analytics um, in their work. So this is, of course, a problem. And this is something that I'd like to uh, engage in a conversation with all of you about. What are the challenges associated with using marketing analytics. Why aren't more companies doing it, especially if they have the, the, the data available? What's missing from marketing analytics that could imp improve the likelihood that companies would use it? So that's one key challenge and probably the most fundamental. As a result, I think it's not surprising that we see that marketers and marketing leaders report the contribution of marketing analytics to their company's performance as low and it's not improving. In fact, as you can see, we had a recent drop down to 3.2 from an average of, say, 3.7 or so. So um, if companies are going to be spending on marketing analytics in the way that we've observed, we would expect them to both use marketing analytics, and hopefully this would contribute to um, how highly marketing analytics makes an impact on their organizations. And so let's, uh, again, let's, let's, let's have a conversation about this when we meet um, online. And I like to think about this as I'll sort of preview to you as kind of return on marketing analytics. How is it that companies can improve the return that they get on marketing analytics? Another challenge that I wanted to highlight here is that, in fact, most companies don't evaluate um, the quality of their marketing analytics. So when we asked marketing leaders this question, um, almost 70% that they said that they don't evaluate the quality of their marketing analytics. That means that there's not a lot of attention given to whether the data um, is insightful, whether the data is serving the purpose what, that it was designed for, that it's arriving on time uh, for decisions, et cetera. Whatever quality criteria you want to give uh, to that question. There's not a lot of, of, of tough questions being asked about marketing analytics. Another issue is how, in fact, among those small set of companies that are using marketing analytics, in what ways are they using it? What you can see here, we've asked this question now several times, first in August of, of 2013 and then again in February of 2015. And the, the biggest growth areas and the highest percent of, of, of activity is in what I think are probably the most important areas, which is the customer acquisition and customer retention. These show the largest increase as well as social media um, and do kind of dominate the extent to which companies are using marketing analytics to drive decision making. So that kind of wraps up what in an introductory way, what I thought was important for you to know about what we found using the CMO survey on this topic of managing social media and marketing analytics. And in the discussion that we have on February 25th, I thought I would answer your questions. I would share with you some additional things that I've written, some additional analysis that I've done using the data, um, and get your comments and ideas about how we might actually improve these activities, these important activities within companies today. Thank you and I'll see you then.